Hello, my friends. What a week did we just have with the Kara Reed trial? There's a lot to go, probably another month or so. And if you're lost and don't know what's going on in the trial, this Saturday at 8 p.m., I'm going to do a live and we're going to do a summary all the way from the beginning, just with the key factors and the key witnesses and stuff. And just go over everything that has happened so far. It is a lot, but I'm going to try to make it concise. I'm going to make some funny slides and hopefully you can make it. But today, today, we're going to go over the testimony of Sergeant Buchanan. And we're going to watch for his body language, his demeanor. And we're going to see if he changes between the defense and the prosecution while he's testifying. So let's get started. There's a lot to go. Here's the clip. Trooper Proctor, you were notified. I am not Trooper Proctor. I'm sorry. No, you're not. Uh, Sergeant Buchanan. Sergeant Buchanan. How do I say it? Buchanan. I'll give that a shot. It's fine. <laughs> okay. See, let's enjoy this smile for a minute, for a second, a millisecond. We're not going to see this smile again during the cross-examination. And look at that. He broke the character. He broke out of the shoe, the defense, the tough guy. And he just gave us a genuine smile, which we have to remember what it looks like because we are going to see a different smile later. But look at this. His eyes are up. His It's just genuine smile because it's like I'm used to it my whole life. Nobody can pronounce my name. And I've been called all kinds of names. And fine, you're just going to be another one, Mr. Jackson. Let's get it going. So, next. Buchanan? Yes. Is that better? That's better. Thank you. And did Trooper Proctor make you aware of uh, conversations that he had had with other people prior to getting to the Kent Police Station? Objection. No, I'll allow that. That's a yes or no. Yes, I did. And did Trooper Proctor make you aware of uh, conversations that he had had with other people prior to getting to the Kent Police Station? Objection. No, I'll allow that. Okay, good. He relayed some information to you as well. That's correct. No, I'll allow that. He gets annoyed with That's the correct. objections. Um, at some she point, did you learn day. the name of the uh, the body or the person that was found on the lawn on, on Fairview Road? Yes, I did. Mr. Lolly, what, if anything, are you doing? If you're here trying to seek the justice for the victim and the victim's family, don't ever repeat that again. Don't ever repeat the name of the body again, please. Thank you. And uh, in reference uh, to where Mr. O'Keefe's body was at that point, uh, what, if any, information did you receive about that? Objection. I'll allow that. I will allow In reference to the Good Samaritan everything Hospital, for Lolly, I will if allow anyone it. else were you told had been taken to that facility as well in relation to, to uh, your response that morning? Objection. I'll allow that. The defendant. Of course you will. Our bags or boxes of, of items of evidentiary value, how are they sealed? Once the bag is... I'll allow it. His or, face. I'll what? allow it. Thank you, Your Honor. Even, even to the judge, he was annoyed. He was like... <sighs> and then the judge was like... I'll allow. He's like, all right, well, listen, judge, do you know who I am? Like, let me speak. And, and then he was like, thank you, judge. Sir, relax. When they were... Um, taped and sealed, uh, what were each of those, what happened with each of those items once they were taken back to, to your office? Objection. I'll allow it. Objection, because he's not the one that sealed the items. He's not the one that packed the items or collected most of the items. So objection, because he's speculating. He doesn't know exactly what happened. He, he wasn't the one to do it. And the judge He's going to allow it. Each item that was sealed, it was processed in, it was logged in, and then it was stored after processing. It was stored uh, in the evidence room. Um, have you been privy to information as far as medical findings, autopsy reports, things of that nature in relation to those prior investigations? So now we get Dr. No, you're not. Buchanan. Dr. Buchanan is going to come and testify about his doctor experience and how he can identify the cause of everything. That nature in relation to those prior investigations. Yes, sir, I have been. Now, with regard to your observations of Mr. O'Keefe, uh, with regard to his eyelids, um, 
what if any what if any observations did you make and, and what if any um well let me start just with physical observations what if any physical observations did you make of mr o'keefe's face and, and body in general his face i observed the swelling and the discoloration uh being produced through the uh the blood pooling in the eyelids how do you know yep so just your just your observation so the swelling and discoloration we'll just try i'll strike the the remainder of what you've said <laughs> i also observed a um cut to his uh, nostril and an eyelid which was very small in size which would have been produced by a objection yeah so we'll leave it at that next question mr lally based on uh, your training experience so what if funny. any uh, conclusions or what if any opinions that you have in regards to the swelling around the eyes objection yeah i'll see you at sidebar here <laughs> is that correct objection i think that was the testimony but ask it differently uh, as far as that drink during that portion uh is that drink number six or drink number seven if you Objection. Yeah, in that form, I'll sustain it. I guess I have to sustain it. At this it. point in time, in the video, after watching, the defendant. watched, how many drinks has the defendant consumed at this point? At this point, she's consumed Objection. or is in possession how of. How does he know? I'll allow it. How does he know Six what was in the, in drinks. the glass? As far as, um, do you know how those cameras work as far as when they turn on? And now we're going to get the camera experts. Buchanan, he's going to talk about how the camera works and everything because he's the expert on most topics in life. And when they turn off, my understanding is that ring surveillance video is triggered to be recorded through motion. So if the camera detects motion, which is constantly live monitoring, and motion is detected, then that video is captured to a cloud based system that retains that footage. On hearing that statement, what, if anything, uh, did you do? What, if anything? I advised the defendant. Now we get legal counsel, okay? He's going to advise the defendant that she should no longer speak. Please, sir, sir, please, okay? First of all, you go to her house with the intention of getting her car and her phone without a warrant because you didn't have a warrant yet. Based on what Jennifer McCabe told somebody else and told you after, so hearsay, hearsay, no investigation, actually. Then you go over there, you hear her, you talk to her, you ask her if she drank, you ask her things that are going to implicate her and be used against her. And then you say, oh, dear Karen Reed, don't speak anymore because here are your rights. Let me read your rights. Did he do any of that? No. So she's going to shake her head. She's like, yeah, right. You didn't do any of that. Not to further speak. Objection. I'll allow that. Of course you will, Your Honor. We don't, we don't need you to say it. We know you allow everything. You allow everything that Lolly wants, and you don't allow the defense to have even proper objections, hearsay objections. If Trooper Proctor did it, why is this guy trying to testify on his behalf? But anyways, let me not start too... Let me not start too... Hard because there's a lot and I want to say this guy actually is a very respectable guy with a very respectable resume okay and you're gonna, you're gonna I don't I don't want to uh, have speculations of oh this guy's doing this or that but this is these are my observations based on his testimony I don't think that he is actually overall after watching everything I don't think he's actually involved in some type of, you know, cover up. But I do believe that because of his position and his status and his him being a supervisor, he is trying to protect the other trooper and also the in integrity of their investigation. Maybe, I don't know, if I was somebody's supervisor and that person had said the things that People claim that Trooper Proctor said, you know, uh, I hope you kill yourself to the to the defendant. And I didn't find any nude photos of her. If I was this person's supervisor, I would want to distance myself from that person and say, listen, we don't do that. We don't do things like that here. I'm going to give you a warning or you're going to get fired or something. 
I wouldn't be defending this person. And especially going on a witness stand and going way above and beyond to testify as we, we, everything we do is together. We ride together. We are like the circle of trust, you know? So that is a little iffy for me. But anyways, let's start from the beginning. Uh, not really. We're not going to start from the beginning. But here is a picture I made between the direct examination where his body language is soft, he's open, his arms are resting on the thing here. He's like, you know, like very comfortable, re ready to go. And then we have some images from the cross-examination here where he, he's going to show us some disappearing lips. He's going to show us this. He's going to show us a little pursing lips. He's going to be itching his head. And at one point, he's going to close his eyes completely. So I don't know what that's all about. But anyways, on my second slide, I'm very proud of it. I got his kind of his resume, but a little bit of what he has said. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is behind here. We have a U.S. presidential helicopter and we have Trump and it's supposed to dance and Biden. There you go. They're dancing now. And Biden's eating ice cream. But anyways, I just thought his resume was really impressive. But let me say this. If I, I think the prosecution is not doing a great job with the order of the witnesses at all. Okay. Prosecution. Have you never heard of first impressions or bias? Because if I'm the somebody sitting in the jury and you bring him first, right? And you tell me his background. He's, he was uh, SWAT, military police, uh, several uh, levels of clearance. He was, uh, you know, with the presidential helicopter, like flying them around. Um, what else did he do? Marine. He's a Marine. I mean, I would have so much respect for him. And I would be sitting there like listening to what this guy is saying. Without thinking about anything else, I'm just, you know, he's like, he's going to say, okay, we went to this place, we found this evidence, then we found this evidence, then we spoke to the defendant, da, 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 da. I would be like, wow, okay, case closed, pretty much. But no, he's coming here after 500 days of us listening about the, the, the Higgins, the phone that, that, this, that he, he threw away. We heard about the Auburn phone that was, uh, he... You know, he traded it in, but then he also traded in. Well, he rehomed his dog, rehomed his home, rehomed the basement, rehomed uh, everything. His brother rehomed the home. And then we're talking about this fight that the, the officer was involved to protect Chris Albert and all these things. And we're talking about for 500 days of Trooper Proctor, Trooper Proctor and the improprieties and the defense opening statement told us that Trooper Proctor said horrible things. So then when you put this guy here after all this testimony has already happened, if you're the jury and if you have made uh, your mind up or if you have like an inclination, okay, I'm leaning towards there's reasonable doubt or I'm leaning towards this, you're going to listen to this guy with a certain bias, right? Because that's what humans do. So I don't think that the prosecution is doing a great job in the order that they are choosing. Uh, so here's my slide. I say, why don't we start with this guy? Uh, the jury may also have a suspicious vibe in their mind by now. And then another point that I thought it was interesting was why would Trooper be here why would he want to protect Trooper Proctor or even get involved in something extremely serious and nefarious with his background, which is super, super respectable, uh, and only knowing Trooper Proctor since uh, 2019? The incident happened in 2022, so it's not a long time to like go die on a hill for somebody. So that was an interesting thing for me. You know, I was like, I, I'm not sure why he would do that. But anyways, so we're going to start with a little attitude. With all that being said about all his amazing background, now I'm going to get to the part where we see 
why, why we do these videos because people get some attitude and they have a certain um, demeanor that when you're doing this type of videos, you're like, you know what? You deserve it. Let me show people your demeanor in court because if they missed it, we're going to point it out right here. So let's watch this video. Having reviewed this, do, does this refresh your recollection that you contacted Good Samaritan Hospital and gave them an assessment, at least based on your investigation at that time? That is not true. What did you say to Good Samaritan Hospital? I never spoke to Good Samaritan Hospital. That document is for the medical examiner's office. Let me pause real quick. I want you to pay attention when he's going to start interacting now with Jackson. His facial expressions, he's going to be like kind of like threatening, not threatening, I'm sorry, challenging Alan because Alan is taking a minute or a second to formulate his question. So he's going to like, his eyebrows going to raise it. He's going to be like, like, yeah, finish your question, bro. Like, uh, uh, can you finish? I don't know. See if you notice this. I'm not asking you where the document right is from. I'm asking you if the document says Trooper Yuri Buchanan called back at 1041 stating the case is now being treated as a suspicion. The objection sustained. Look at his did face. You say, did you call back to Good Samaritan Hospital and say that the investigation was being treated as a suspicious due to domestic, uh, sorry, due look to at, Look at that. Did you say that? I never spoke to Good Samaritan Hospital. Did you say that there's a possibility that D was struck in the face with a cocktail glass? Objection. Sustained. Did you ever contact anybody in, at any medical facility and indicate that the investigation was being treated as a suspicious, in, quote, quote, in quote, quotation marks, because the victim appeared to have been struck in the face by a cocktail glass? Did Objection. You allow that did you ever say that yes your honor yes i did say that to the medical examiner d was struck in the face with a cocktail glass Let me go back one second Kenneth called back at 10 41 stating the case is now being treated as a suspicion the objection sustained he's so mad did you say did you call back rolling his eye hospital and say that the investigation was being treated as a suspicious Look, that face right there, that face right there. It's like, can you, can you, can you finish your question, darling? I don't think you're capable of it. Do you see that? Ah, makes me mad. Domestic, uh, sorry. Look do again, again. Go ahead. Can you do it? Like, can you finish your your sentence? Are you able to? to a domestic situation. Did you say that? I never spoke to Good Samaritan. Because he had an answer, right? He didn't speak to the hospital. He spoke, I believe, with the ME. So he is so proud of himself that he has an answer. And he's like, mm -hmm, finish your question because I have the answer and I'm right. You're wrong. Because what you're trying to accuse me of, I'm right. You're wrong. And I just think it's ugly to have an attitude like that because you have no humility you have like a huge, you know, ego and arrogant uh, demeanor in the behavior. I'm not saying he is like that as a person the whole time, but in this behavior that for people that are watching it, we can uh, catch on that. Even sometimes when we don't realize the micro expressions after somebody finishes a uh, testimony, you get a feeling, you get a feeling of like, okay, this, this person made me feel like icky or this person made me feel like, oh, I, I believe her. So it's it's something that, you know, keep to keep in mind because I think humility is a lot, it looks a lot better on people and the other people receive it a lot better. So I don't know what his intention is, if it's just to be right, but those faces that he was making, uh-uh, not nice. So here, uh, so today we're obviously going to start with the cross-examination some slides from the cross because I feel like sometimes I start with the direct and it's a little bit slow. So we're going to start with the Sally Port, the Sally Port video. Now we're going to talk about the anomalies. Ana okay. I cannot say that. Anomaly, anomalies, anomalies, 
anomalies that have, can you guys say anomaly? Anomaly that have occurred in this. And it's fantastic. It's fantastic because if I didn't pay attention to the defense, if I didn't know anything, if I didn't have internet or anything, and I just saw this case presented by the prosecution, I would have been like, okay, okay. So they found some things, they found the tail lights, they got the car, okay. So there's no accusation of impropriety or anything, right? But it's so weird. This video that they have mirrored, the prosecutor never questions him on it. We have to find out from the defense that, you know, the tail light that they keep telling us was broken on the right back side. They flipped, they flipped the car. So they flipped. Whoa. And then we were thinking it was the other way and they were never going to tell us. They were not going to tell us. So why? That doesn't look good at all. It doesn't look good at all. So here is the slide. Okay. We have the, um, um, the things we have the things going on here. So we have the police name, which is on the bottom here on the yellow arrow, which is mirrored. You can see that you have the number four on the top yellow arrow. So here we get a ghost. And then let's see the next one on this, on this subject. Okay, here we go. So there are three guys. I mean, if you guys watch the, we're, we're going to watch the video, I believe. So there are three guys on the right side by the tail light, the tail light that everybody says it was broken and, and we don't got, we don't got pictures of it, right? Because Trooper Proctor and Trooper Buchanan, they went to see Carrie the morning after and her car was there. Why didn't they take pictures of it? They have a video very far away of it being towed, but they don't have pictures close by. So here we have on the top, the driver's side. See on our right hand side, which is supposed to be the passenger. That's the actual driver's side. So the tail light would be on the other side. And then we have here on the right hand side, another picture with the person actually coming out of the car. And on the bottom, we have the three guys. So if it's not suspicious, then why invert the video? And if it's not suspicious, why not mention it during the direct examination? So I don't understand those things. And after so many accusations of uh, impropriety in the investigation, I mean, it's another one to be considered uh, not beyond a reasonable doubt, whatever you guys want to convict her of. Now, this is fantastic because I was like, this is a ghost. This is a ghost. So these are still images, like even less than a second sometimes that I do. And you're going to see this guy that passed by the, the, the car here walking outside. And you're going to see his foot. His foot is stays in the image and in the same where the, the same foot still there when the ghost appears. So what the heck is even happening here? Right? So let's see. Uh, what did Mr. Buchanan have to say about this? True and accurate, correct? Correct. You testified that it was a uh, it was reflective of your observations of what was happening in that Sally Port that morning, uh, that evening, correct? I testified that this is a accurate uh, scene and collection of video evidence from the Sally Port. And as that Stuttering shot, a little bit. Sally Port, just like this, it appears from all perspective that what we're looking at is the passenger side of the car and that right yes. tail light is right there shining in our face, correct? From this perspective. That's what it looks like. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? You understood the question. From the perspective that the jurors are looking at, okay. 
from all indications, that would appear to be the right side of the truck, the passenger side of the truck, and that taillight that you can see is the right rear taillight from this perspective. Right, you know the that. way it presents itself, yes. And it presents itself. The entirety of your question by Mr. Lau, not once did you mention that this video is actually completely inverted. Right? I did not know. Mr. Lally didn't ask you if it was inverted. Did right? he say he did not That's know? Correct. And if I hadn't gotten up here and begun questioning you, that would be left uncorrected, correct? Correct. Sustained. Why is that sustained? I don't understand. Please, somebody help me in the comment section. Why is that sustained? If I didn't ask you, you wouldn't have told us. Is that like speculation or something? Like Mr. Lali didn't ask, you didn't tell, and then you said this is an accurate, it's an accurate image of what happened, but it's not because we're thinking this is the passenger side when in reality, this is the other side, the driver's side. So. The person with the, the winter cap appears to walk directly to the, the, what ultimately should be the right rear taillight of this car, correct? There's three that's guys the Visaya, back there. Yes, that's where he is. Yeah. Look, this is the driver. Pause it. Pause it. I'd like you to pay attention to the right rear of this car. And I know we're completely backward, but it's the far corner of the car. It, do you see a person's head there? It right appears as there. if someone's still there. And that person is located at or near what the portion of the car? Yeah. In real life or in, as it's depicted? Oh, come on, sir. In the video the that we're watching near, right now. I mean, in real life, near the, uh, the the right rear tail light of the car. It, yes. Yes. Fact, right here, the standing head. Standing there, hovering around me, correct? We yeah. don't know the distance that they are in proximity to the actual vehicle. We just know that they're behind the vehicle. That looks like it's pretty close. Blah blah blah, blah 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 blah. Does that look like he's in close proximity to the right rear tail light? As I said, I can't tell how far away he is from the vehicle. Blah, 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 blah. We're not there, stupid. Sir. You can't tell that he's right next to the right rear tail light? Objection. We can tell. Sustained. All right. Um, I want you to pay attention to what that person does as soon as the other person comes out from behind that car. See if you see him move. Stop it. Oh, it goes. You see that person move? Uh, I, I saw movement in the frame, yes. Right when the other person is in eyesight of the person toward the right rear, correct? I mean, the video speaks for itself. I, 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 yeah, it does. No. Objection, Your Honor. The objection sustained. No commenting, <sighs> Mr. Jackson. We've talked. We've talked about this. Okay, she just annoys me because she, she lets Lolly go on and on and on and on what if what if anything what if anything for hours and alan jackson is like on point you know type a personality my type per person he goes 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 and then she's never she's never trying to help the defense in any way but but this video and we have still shots of it in the slide it shows three people at one point Three people there, like in the back. This is the foot leaving. Oh, and by the way, on this slide, look who's the ghost here on the top. Brian Higgins, because he did get access to the cellar for nine minutes before the car arrived. So here is the one that I have showing three guys in the back. That's where it's really hard to see. But here on the bottom picture, for example, you can see a guy. Um, you can see it. You can see that there are three guys uh, back there doing what? I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. So for him to be such an expert when it comes to the direct examination. Oh, yeah. This is how video with ring operates. And this is how it works. 
this is how uh, the body works. And he's, here's how the blood vessels and this damage to the body occur. And this is where this injury comes from. But when it comes to, do you see that guy right there behind the tail light? He's like, I cannot tell how far the guy is standing from the tail light. So it's really, I want to be precise here, Your Honor. But anyway, now moving on to another subject when he is being questioned about the chief of police and the possible conflict of interest. So we're going to watch the video. But before we do, I just want us to take a look at this slide here. Uh, when Alan says, did you find it unusual or suspicious in any way that the chief of police for the conflicted Canton Police Department was the person driving by 34 Fairview looking for evidence. He's going to look to the side, look at someone for a millisecond, but I captured it here on this picture. Then he is going to say... Uh, okay, so this is going to be a contempt, a little bit of a contempt. On the bottom uh, where it says real smile, that's the smile I got from when he was talking about his name. That was the only, only natural smile we got from him. Now, on the top one, it's going to be contempt. It's kind of like a, a thrill for being above somebody else or for being right uh, here it says uh, he's going to also have an eyebrow raise to appear, or appear or feel skeptical, surprised, or even mildly scandalized because Alan's going to have a long question. So even though he just came from being examined by Lolly, he is like, oh my gosh, Alan has such a long question. It's so much. I cannot possibly comprehend it. You have to repeat it. But then his eyebrow is going to raise. He's going to do a little smile, like a little contempt and kind of like rearranging his posture and making himself all big. So let's see how that goes in the video. So did you find it unusual or suspicious in any way that the chief well, somebody to the right. conflicted Kenton PD was the person driving by 34 Fairview okay, looking, for that's him, it. Uh, looking for evidence? Objection. Can you answer that question, Sergeant? Um, he would have to repeat it. There's just so much I can't. It was a little, it was a little wordy. I'll try it again. So Did you find that suspicious? Which part? You have to repeat the whole thing. That Chief Berkowitz from the conflicted okay, PD was at 34 Fairview looking for evidence. The way you posed the question, um, I did not find it suspicious at all. He's the chief of the pol police in the town where he works, and he's driving down the street. I mean, that's not suspicious. With a conflict of interest the on the very and case that he's driving by. Objection. So that was uh, another slide we're gonna go, we're gonna see right now: the disappearing lips and the tongue jut. Right after that, the he does. Oh my God, his question is so long. The way you pose the question, then he's going to do, I did not find it suspicious at all with this face here in the middle. And the last one is right after he's done uh, with his like monologue, you know, he's the chief of police. He was just at the scene, blah, blah, blah. And he's going to go right after the sentence, which is always a good indication, right? When looking for micro expressions in the face, when the person is done with their response is when we actually see if their body is reacting in any way. And also, always very important to remember, we look for clusters because body language is unique and individually wonderfully made. Each person acts and reacts in a different manner. Clusters is when your face does a bunch of things, your body does a bunch of things together, which are not usually how you respond. And then we see how they fit with, with the question. What are we talking about here? So here we're talking about a uh, possible conflict of interest, and we're talking about a chief of police. This guy, you know, he has probably had all the ranks in his life. He has all the top secret clearances, and he looks at Alan Jackson like he's a bug. Like, sir, excuse me, I, I worked for the president. Get out of my way. So... He does have this air, you know, of like, no, I did not find it suspicious at all. But then he does the 
the disappearing lips and the tongue jaw, which is kind of like getting away with something. His face to me says, got him. I'm the smartest guy in the room. Like there's nothing you can do that is going to make me fall for this. So I don't know. I don't know. But the word conflict itself made him change position and then grab, uh, do like a finger grip and hand hand wringing is a universal way of showing we're stressed or concerned. And he did that exactly at the word conflict. So I don't know if maybe, uh, I don't know. I don't know what his knowledge, his involvement, I don't know how deep, if any, <laughs> if he has any knowledge, but the word conflict bothered him because he, he moved up and he was like, Kind of like, you know, stress, concern about that. So I don't know if he doesn't like the fact that all these fingers are being pointed at the investigation that he was a supervisor at, or I don't know. All we can see is what his body does, right? So let's see what the next one. And among Kenton PD and your witnesses, you would find that inappropriate, would you not? Objection. Sustained. You returned to the scene on February 10th, is that right? Uh, to conduct another search, you said. I was present on the 10th, yes. Who dispatched you back to, or did anybody dispatch you back to that location on February 10th? How'd you end up there is a better way to ask it. <laughs> February 10th, days just later? like um, previous days, we made plans to go to the location in the morning, afternoon, drive by. I was on my way to work and to home. So I traveled that route on purpose. And um, as evidence revealed itself due to the natural melting of the snow, we would stop and collect the visible evidence. Okay, so hold up now, sir. I've watched plenty of Dexters and they go to the crime scene, they collect the evidence and then they go to the lab and they go to the police department. They don't go to the crime scene in the morning and in the afternoon. And why did you make this determination? Is it because it was a police officer? What, why was this specific incident so special that you said, let's go out of our way in the morning and in the afternoon to drive by because there will be evidence presenting itself. Hi, I'm evidence. Hi, I'm here on February 11th. Or let's drive by. Oh, hello. I'm a shoe. I'm a shoe. I'm a hat. Hi, I'm presenting myself. How do you tell your officers to go out of their way on their way home to drive by this specific incident's location? What about everything else? What about all the homicides? Was there not, no more homicides from January 29th to, through the end of February? And why did you guys wait until months later to log the evidence? Very weird, okay? So if I, like I said, if I didn't have any of the defense's theory, any of their arguments in my mind, and I just saw, okay, so we saw these things and we gathered these items afterwards, I would be like, oh, okay, they gathered these items afterwards. But the fact that you're being asked this question, why did you go back? And you're saying, well, we just go, we just drive there in the morning, in the afternoon until evidence presents itself. <laughs> Sir. Do you realize, Mr. Doctor Everything, how crazy that sounds? Do you believe at this point, sir, that, that whatever you might collect at the scene would obviously be important, correct? Anything we collected that had evidentiary value or presented itself as somehow related to the crime or the uh, incident would be collected. And it would be important to the investigation, right? You treat it as important. Treat it as important, yes. So my question is... So why don't you go if, you know, if you think there's more evidence, stop with the presenting itself because evidence is not going to present itself. You, as the investigator, have, have to go and seek it, right? So is there not a machine of some kind? I don't know. I've never seen snow. I've never seen snow. Oh, I want to see snow. But isn't there some type of device or super machine or some type of something that can melt the snow so that you guys can like process the crime scene without the snow? I don't know. Was, especially as, to, as it relates to the February 10th search where there were multiple items found, 
did you seek to have CSSS come out and actually either mark with GPS coordinates or measure with cross coordinates exactly where each item of evidence was found? We did not do that. We had collected so much evidence already and so much has been documented at that point that we did not contact crime scene services to come back out and photograph more shards of glass. And sure, but neither did you document on a log what you found, which day, by who, where did it go, how was it packed, right? So you didn't call CERT, but you didn't document it either. So, oh, we just, we had already documented so much. Why document anymore? We'll just put it in the back and maybe in a few months we'll, and we'll log it in. We simply collected it for processing. So the location of each one of those items was not of that great importance to you, at least at that time? It was of great importance as to the fact that it was located in the vicinity where the victim was found and in the vicinity of other items located of the same characteristic, uh, shape, size, and uh, color. So that's my question. So what does vicinity mean? In, in the area. Okay, what does area mean? It's a location, specific location. Okay, are we talking about, if we do this all day, I guess, are we talking about an area <laughs> of five feet or an area of 50 feet? Based on where the items were recovered, we're talking about an area approximately of 30 square feet between the, um, the roadway uh, into the grass. It's the we saw photographs, Sergeant, of items that were butted up against a fire hydrant in one instance, correct? Is that yes? That's correct, yes. A drinking straw that's out in the road, correct? That's correct. Another shard of glass that's in the grass, closer that's to the flagpole, correct? Correct. A hat that's under the snow adjacent to the left side of the flagpole, correct? I'm mm. sorry, it wasn't. It was closer to the electrical box, wasn't it? No. The pictures the uh, uh, documented where the hat was. It was to the right of the flagpole. So these shards of glass, the point I'm asking is, did you seek to use basic cross coordinates, measurements from something that you know is a known object, like for instance, I don't know, a flagpole or a fire hydrant, 27 inches to the north and a foot and a half to the south of those two known points. That would give you a cross coordinate, correct? It would document the exact location, correct. And you did not do that with any of these items, correct? The items that were not photographed um, were not also GPS uh, located, but they were within the same vicinity of where the other items were collected. But again, now we're back to the same question. Your word for vicinity might be different than my word for vicinity, right? Objection. Sustained. Why is it sustained? Why is it sustained? Of course it is. What is your measurement? What, how do you measure vicinity? Did you measure where you, you found items, the items? items. Uh, it's obviously important to memorialize on the evidence bag or in some other way exactly where they're found, who found them, the date, time, etc. Correct? We do the best we can to uh, document all known information on each evidence item bagged uh, at the time. And in terms of the February 10th search... Okay, I'm going to pause right here because we have to go through the slide uh, where he says we do the best we can. But before then, okay, we have this one, which is uh, not a real picture uh, of 34 Fairview Road. And, you know, I think they're talking about vicinity being by the flagpole. I'm not good with measurements. So he said 30 square feet from the flagpole to the road. That's where they found the shoe, the hat. They found a straw. They found glasses. They found all kinds of things. Uh, and then he says, we do the best we can to document information, but they didn't do a log like this was found on this date by this person. And, you know, the, the evidence just kept presenting itself days and days afterwards. So it is a little strange. So these are just screenshots. Just so, so for our own reference, you know, of what it was presented in court that they found. I'm not trying to like look deeply into this with the slide, but just so we know what was presented, the glasses, the, I believe the second picture is the shoe. I did not see the straw. I may have missed it, but the glasses are here. And here is what, where we are at right now with his facial expressions, which I found it interesting when he says, uh, we do the best we can to document the information. He shows a lot of clusters. He shows all of these, the disappearing lips on the first picture, 
where the lips go inside and it's because of stress, anxiety, or something is wrong. Then he does a little pursing lips, like could be a sign of aggression. Then he starts to chew or bite his lips. He does a little tongue jut. Then he's going to do a head tilt. Like, let me pay attention to this question because I'm stressed. And then he's going to raise his eyebrow like concern or disapproval before the video is shown. So let's go back to the little video in slow motion to see these expressions come true in front of our eyes. We do the best we can to uh, document all known information on each evidence item bagged uh, at the time. Wait, this is where he's doing the chewing, the disappearing lips. Is he's going to do the pursing lips and the tongue jot. And in terms of the February 10th search, I, I want to just ask you a couple of quick questions about that evidence bag. Did you bag? I had to and big swallow. So that's what I wanted to show. Then we have this one, which is where he's going to talk about that was all that was collected. And then let me just take myself out so we can go over this slide. He's going to do a lot of disappearing lips on the top. Again, the lip pursing, which is like this. Then he's going to do a disappearing lips again. And then he's going to do a complete, very delay in opening his eyelids, which could be upon hearing information indicative of negative emotions or displeasure. So here with the disappearing lips, we have stress, anxiety, we have pursing, rejection, disagreement, chin forward, aggression. We have chewing or biting lips, signal of nervousness. We have uh, tongue jut, got away with something, or maybe I got caught making a mistake. And we have closing eyes for displeasure, negative emotions. So the body language, when he started this lining of questioning, he was uh, here on the bottom right hand side he was leaning forward he was relaxed his hands were like this he's just like body language accepting interested engaged after the line of questioning is at the end he is back defensive like making himself bigger so that we know we know who we're talking to so now let's watch this video. Perhaps was consistent with the same locations this was collected. I want to shift. So that was him getting all big again. Did you guys see that? You know, with the consistent with the same location that this was collected. This is a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of disagreement, disapproval. So could it be just simply because he's pissed off that there wasn't a log that, you know, he's used to telling other people what to do. And maybe because he was a supervisor, he was expecting, um, I was going to say Dr. Proctor, Michael Proctor, Trooper Michael Proctor to, uh, to write a log, to make sure the evidence is, is correctly logged. And because all of this is being thrown at his face, his his facial, his uh, body language is like completely stressed, completely, I don't like this, completely, why am I in this position that I have to like close my eyes because I'm so frustrated with this position that I'm in. So anyways, now we're going to go to where Alan Jackson is going to ask him about the the car if they touch or interfered in any way with the car so before we watch the video on this one let's just take a look at this slide real quick and see so here is alan jackson uh you and proctor did not touch or interfere in any way with the car prior to the search warrant so he is going to do a little bit of uh, chewing which is the brain stressed so you have to chew lips or do something or touch your face 
And he's also going to do a touch, uh, yeah, face touching to pacify, nervous, irritated co uh, concern. And then he's going to have a contempt here with the red arrow where he's like the, the a little bit of the side of one of the side of the lips is kind of like a little smile. It's like a mm, like contempt for somebody. So let's see what the video shows us. Asked by Mr. Lally. Oh, it's uh, not on. Does the video show you or Trooper Proctor having access to or messing with in any way that right rear tail light in any fashion? And you said never. Leg itch. Uh, I was asked if at any point Trooper Proctor and I had con came into contact, I believe. Squinting at the eyes, looking at the jury. Touched the vehicle. In that portion of the vehicle, Hands and gripping. I said never. We never touched the vehicle Eyebrows and prior forehead. to uh, it being Gonna properly a, processed with a temp. search warrant. And that was the there specifically his question was to, and your answer was to the right rear portion. So I want to go back because he was explaining to the, and I'm not going to be talking when I go back, but when he was explaining to the jury, he was kind of like, yeah, and that's what we did, and like I couldn't find a, a picture of hmm because I don't know how to how to write, how to spell that. But it's kind of like, you see, let me, let me make it slow motion. Uh, I was asked if at any point Trooper Proctor and I had con came into contact, I believe, and, or touched the vehicle and that portion of the vehicle. And I said, never, we never touched the vehicle. Wait, after he says prior to getting a warrant. Prior to uh, it being properly processed with a search warrant. And that was the specifically his question was to and your your lips answer showing was to the right rear warrant. and the tongue judge. So the attitude is like a level, it's, a, it's like a high level right now with the attitude, right? So, you know. Why are you giving the jury an attitude? Because it might be a millisecond, but trust me, people can feel that type of attitude. So, sir, tone it down a little bit, especially when you're talking to the jury. You're like, so, like, why is this guy questioning me? This is the vibe I get from him. You know, why is this guy questioning me? So then the next slide we are going to see is this one here about when he talks about the red light he's going to have another little area of contempt in his face uh kind of like when he hears the when he says oh the right the right rear damage tail light correct he has this face of oh your client is done uh look at his face and then he's gonna look as cons at and that is we look as cons at people when we are distrustful or ain't unconvinced and then the last picture here on the top is him looking at the video with the with the air of superiority i don't know if i'm misreading his body language but that's what i get the feeling from him it's kind of like huh, look at me i'm i'm a doctor i'm an attorney i'm all the things and of course he, he isn't a doctor and an attorney but he did testify about giving somebody legal advice he did testify about knowing the the body the human body and you know what causes certain uh things which he's a marine i mean god knows what this guy has already done the knowledge he has but the air that you come into court to testify about these subjects and you know they are experts you know there's a process you know people have to be qualified to speak about certain things so even if you do know a lot more than everybody else it's it looks better to be humble and stay in your lane and testify about the things that you have done than to try to testify on behalf of Proctor and the whole world, right? I believe so. So let's take a look at this video now. Specifically, his question was to, and your answer was to the right rear portion of the video, right? That right rear tail light. That's the, the right rear damaged tail light, correct. Right. Um, with the court's permission, I'd like to play uh, a portion of um, like sure show me a little video okay so i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know 
What is the feeling that you got after you watched his direct examination, after you watched his cross-examination? What is the feeling that you got? And that was cross. So cross is always a little bit, you know, is a little bit harder. We get a little bit more um, critical and that's cross. So now we're going to talk a little bit about direct examination. It's not going to be a long one because I can't hear, I can't listen to Lolly for too long. Uh, so Lolly here is going to say, can you sort of answer everything we, so I don't have to call Proctor and Sergeant Buchanan answers. Yes. The circle of trust, right? I'm just kidding guys. This is not, this is not what happened. This is not what happened. Here is a slide about the qualifications of Sergeant Buchanan in the witness stand. We got Dr. Uriv. Okay, I'm not going to try to say his first name. Dr. Buchanan, Amy Buchanan, Cor Coroner Buchanan, Ring Camera Expert Buchanan, and Counsel Buchanan. Turned down for what? This guy, this guy. Okay, this is when the evidence presents itself. Because that's what evidence does, right? Evidence continues to present itself. Now, on this next slide, we're going to just take a look at what, during the direct, was introduced in court. So we had the jeans, the shirt, the jacket, the shoe, the belt introduced. Uh, also, he says something like, he hints that, the, that Karen Reed also had a ring camera at her house and that when they, they meaning Proctor went to obtain the, the camera footage from ring that the time that she arrived at home after January 29th night, which is what we would be able to see was there damage, what kind of damage it was. Maybe we would be able to see it. That video doesn't exist or yeah, it just doesn't. So when Buchanan was, when Sergeant Buchanan was testifying, he kind of hinted at that. Like, you know, I don't know what happened. So Alan Jackson was very direct when he did the cross-examination to make sure that was cleared up. You're not trying to say my client deleted it or you have any evidence of that, right? Then they also introduced this on the bottom here, which is the video of the car being towed. And they want the jury to look at this video and to, to look at the taillight to see if we see red, yellow, white. What do we see? And my question is, why didn't they take a picture of the damaged taillight right here, right before it was told? They were in there talking to Karen Reed. They could have, even before they walked in, taken a picture of the damaged taillight. So I don't understand these gaps. I just don't understand why we have to get a binocular to try to figure out the tail light here on this on this screenshot on the video that they're showing us from the next morning. So here is another thing. We're gonna talk about this guy on top is Bruce. What's his name again? Bruce. Ah, oh, I didn't get okay. He's an attorney on YouTube that is very funny and he talks about self-snitching. He says, listen. Most people that get in trouble is because they self snitch. Don't talk to the cops. Get an attorney. Know your rights. Ask them if they have a warrant. And they didn't do that here because when this guy went with Trooper Proctor to talk to Karen Reed, he says, Oh, Mr. Reed invited us right in. And then we were just there to gather information. But it's not true because they were there with the intention of already taking the SUV, taking the phone without a warrant. They were there because they heard somebody say they heard from Jennifer McCabe that that's what had happened. And they just went by Jennifer McCabe. So everything goes back to Jennifer McCabe. So do we believe Jennifer McCabe? And then is her story correct? And then we're just everything else, you know, evidence is appearing days after evidence keeps presenting itself. The video of the salad port is inverted. The phones are being traded in or thrown in the garbage in a military base for no reason. People are moving, selling their homes. So all of that, all of that could have been avoided a lot if Karen hadn't spoken. 
because if she said, oh my God, could I have hit him? Could I have hit him? And Jennifer McCabe was like, you know what? That's perfect. She's the one. If that's what happened. I don't know what happened. I'm watching the trial just like you. And to be honest, this time when we talked about the drinks, which we're going we're gonna to go over real quick, how many drinks she had. Yeah, it looks like Carrie took a bunch of drinks, but so did everybody else, right? So as far as the DUI charge, they're getting closer to that, in my personal opinion, in my humble opinion, right? But the other charges of the homicide with intent, murder with intent, I don't think so. I don't think they're, they're getting close. So this slide here, the don't self-snitch, Karen told Trooper that she had a fight with Mr. O'Keefe the day before due to the breakfast the kids were eating, that she did not see him him go inside the house. Now, is that true? Do we have, why? Why don't we have a video of the interview? Where is it? Where's the picture of the damage style line? Where's the interview? Where's the interview? And then these are his faces. When he's going to quote, supposedly, he's going to say, oh, and we were talking about the damage. Kara Reed said, I don't know. It happened last night. And then look at the faces he's going to make right after he says, end quote. It doesn't look like he's telling the truth here, to be honest with you. Okay. He's going to do a disappear. And I don't say that. I don't say that almost ever, but he looks very different than he usually does. He does that. Something is wrong. Got away with something twice. Got it. First, he does it to the side. Then he does it to the front. And then he's going to be like, kind of like wondering, like, what the F did I just say? Watch this. Watch this. And then tell me what you think. Approximately an hour uh, hanging out with acquaintances. And then um, Depressed, some hesitation, they left some lip the waterfall. She drove them to, after they were invited to a residence, she drove them to um, a, lot of a location in Canton where she dropped Mr. O'Keefe off. She was asked if she saw Mr. O'Keefe walk into the home at 34 Fairview, and she stated she did not. She stated that Pause. She made a three-point turn after dropping him off and left. She was asked whether or not... Did you ask her? Mr. O'Keefe... Um, Is he testifying me, on let behalf me, let of me back doctor? Up. She was asked if she knew if how she found out about the damage to her vehicle, to which she stated, quote, Watch. I don't know. It happened last night. Look at his faces. End quote. Now, at some point, what the heck was that? What the heck was that? Like, kind of like, let's let's watch it again. An hour, uh, hanging out with acquaintances, and then um, they left the waterfall. She drove them to after they were invited to a residence. She drove them to um, a location in Canton. A lot of hesitation. Where she dropped Mr. O'Keefe off. She was asked if she saw... Sounds to me like he's trying to remember the key points. Mr. O'Keefe walked into the home at 34 Fairview, and she stated she did not. She stated that she made a three-point turn after dropping him off and left. She was asked whether or not Mr. O'Keefe, um, excuse me, let, let me back up. She was asked if she knew if how she found out about the damage to her vehicle, to which she stated, quote, I don't know. It happened last night. End quote. Wait, let's make this now. After he's done speaking, that's where that's where we usually see. The body language thing is happening now. Looking to the horizon, looking down, look at the deep breath. He went somewhere. Where are you going? Where did uh, you go? Some point, now he comes back. 
um, closes his lips. Earlier in the interview, uh, what if any indications and Kong thoughts and to, to uh, who Mr. Key? So lots of stress, lots of stress in this video when he says end quote. Does that mean that maybe he he's just saying things that Proctor told him and he's not comfortable? I don't know, but definitely his face was um, saying a lot of things here. Now, the next one, and then I have this slide here, which is another one right after the Bruce, Bruce Rivers. That's his name. Bruce Rivers is a criminal lawyer. Bruce Rivers is a criminal lawyer. Yeah. Bruce Rivers is a criminal lawyer. You guys got to watch this video. Then you're going to know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to sing the, the song he has in the beginning. He's, he's great. So anyways, <clears throat> this is another picture. This is the morning afterwards. And this is Karen, Karen's SUV. Why? Oh, why? Didn't they take a picture of the SUV? right there and the tail lights we would be able to see what does the tail light look like but can we no because all we get is s shit sorry like this we see this car in the bottom here and we're supposed to try to figure out what if anything can we actually see so now we're gonna watch real quick the karen video supposedly hitting uh john o'keefe's car which i don't think i saw it when the def when the prosecution was in the direct i'm gonna try to look for it again right now when i watch it with you guys i know for sure that when the defense showed the video i did see john's car move but when the prosecution was doing it in the direct, ah, wait, I did not see it. So here is the video. Go. And look at the tire. Gets so dark. I did not see. Not on this video, but for sure, when the defense shows the same video, I did see the car, the tire move. So I don't know. Now we're going to the McCarthy's slide. So the McCarthy slide is <clears throat> actually one of the pieces of evidence that I kind of side with the prosecution. I mean, come on, it's video. She's at a bar. They're handing her shot glasses. People are saying, well, maybe she didn't drink the shot glasses. Maybe they have less alcohol in there. Okay, fine. But, but yeah, I mean, this to me is fine. It's, it looks like they can see that she was drinking. I don't know how much, and I wouldn't be comfortable. Maybe I wouldn't be comfortable convicting someone without the the regular things the breathalyzer or any other proof you know because you're just showing me a glass with clear liquid i'm in a regular world sure i believe she was drinking but if you put me in a position where i have to convict her of a, a homicide no i don't think i would be comfortable with that but but we're not gonna watch that video of her we're gonna watch something more interesting okay we're going to watch somebody else's DUI, somebody else's charge that maybe should be here instead of Karen. Or maybe the prosecution shouldn't really be looking so much at how many drinks Karen had because look at this. She was surrounded by police officers. Why didn't anybody pull her over? So here is Brian Albert's UI. Yes. And you continued drinking throughout the evening consistently? Yes. Did you believe you were okay to drive? Yes. 
Um, what kind of car did you have at the time? Uh, Ford Edge. Black? Yes. Uh, who rode? Did you drive that car home from the waterfall? Yes. Uh, who rode with you? Uh, my wife. So that's it for him. And now let's look at Brian Higgins' DUI. You know Brian and Kevin the best. On January 28th, you drove your Jeep Wrangler to the Hillside Bar to meet up with Brian Albert for drinks, correct? I did. You said you drank three to four whiskey sodas at the Hillside. Is that right? Uh, it'd be Jameson and Ginger, it's not whiskey thing, soda. same thing, sir. My mistake. Jameson and Ginger. Jameson is a Irish whiskey. Whiskey? It is. Uh, so, and ginger is ginger ale? Yes. Okay. Uh, what was Brian Albert drinking? If I was to guess, a beer. I don't want you to guess. Do you know what he, what he was drinking? No, I don't. He was drinking. He was okay, I'm going to stop here. So I tried my best, and I looked for a long time for the other part of the video where Higgins is going to say he had, I think, two other drinks. Because I know that he admitted to having six drinks at least. Okay, so six whiskeys with ginger, and then Brian Albert, I don't know if he was drinking beer or whatever, but he, he, he was fine to drive. You believed you were fine to drive, you believed you were fine to drive. So, prosecution, when you do this and you start counting her drinks, is a little bit hypocritical, don't you think? I think so. I think so. So here you go, guys. Spoiler alert, Proctor is coming next. We know Proctor is coming next because somebody said something today. And I think it's going to be a great day in court. Am I going to do a body language video on Trooper Michael Proctor? Oh, yes. You bet your little butt I will. And also, if you want to put everything together like a summary with pictures, with sense of humor, with a chat, and with a lot of laughter, hopefully, this Saturday at 8 p.m., I'm going to be doing a live. And I hope that you can come and support. And thank you so much, everybody, for watching the channel, for supporting the channel. We're growing. We're just starting out on this type of content. And I'm really, really grateful for everybody. So with that being said, have a great day. And I'll see you guys next time.